Hello, I'm Darm again. Today's questions have asked if I would discuss internet trolls, the cyberbully. There is a lot to cover in this, so I've decided to break this video into two parts. In this video, I'm going to talk about what trolling is and look at the different kinds of internet troll. And also look at some of the motivation behind that kind of behaviour. In the next video, I'm going to discuss some of the research that has went into the personality types that engage in cyberbullying. So if you find this video interesting, please consider subscribing to my channel. But just to remind you, this video is for information purposes only. Now the term troll comes from a mythical antisocial kind of creature. They tend to be very grumpy and very quarrelsome and particularly hard to get along with. In the kids story, The Three Billy Goats Gruff, the troll in that story lived under a bridge, if you will, hid in the shadows. I think the same could be said for internet trolls. They hide anonymously behind their phones, their laptops or whatever. Some even create fake accounts just to spread misery online. So what is internet trolling? Well, first of all, let's look at what it isn't. Someone who posts something maybe controversial or has a disagreement with someone isn't necessarily an internet troll. The Oxford Dictionary describes an online troll as someone who is making a deliberately offensive or provocative online post with the aim of upsetting someone. So from that definition, I would suggest that with trolling, there is an intent. But I don't necessarily think that definition covers all kinds of trolling. So let's look at some of the different kinds of online troll, ranging from the nuisance to the outright sadistic. First of all, there is the pay attention to me kind of troll. Now, this person may have no real interest in what the post is or what the discussion is about. They maybe don't really want to learn anything new. They are perhaps just lonely. They just want a bit of attention. They will comment on pretty much anything, hoping that someone is going to engage with them. Or you could have the pay attention to me kind of troll who just wants everybody to read what they have to say, to go to their page, their website, to watch their videos, to read their blogs, to maybe buy or download stuff from them. And I would say that this kind of troll would be more like spamming. Then there's what's known as the griefer. Now, this is the troll who likes to irritate others just for the sake of a joke. They may come across as a playful, rule-breaking kind of scamp, but... As much as that banter can be harmless, there can also be a sinister side to it. They seem to enjoy embarrassing, sabotaging or even humiliating others just for a giggle. Then there would be what's known as, well, what I would call the pedantic, sometimes referred to as maybe the grammar police. Now, this is the troll who would maybe see the misspelling of a word or an apostrophe in the wrong place or maybe something has been mispronounced and, and my goodness, they just pounce. This kind looks for human error and weakness and finds ways to exploit it for their own gratification. When others maybe challenge them on pointing out the error, it's still a win for them because the topic of conversation has now shifted. They are being engaged with, not the person who made the original post themselves. It can also be a tactic to devalue and criticise the person who made the error. Maybe they just made one small human error, but according to this troll, they are clearly stupid. You shouldn't listen to anything they have to say. Which can be very similar to the intellectual troll. Now, this is the troll who likes to share their opinions, whether they have any knowledge on the topic or not. They, they behave as if their thoughtful musings are more important than facts or experience. They disagree with things like virtue signalling and making statements like a lot of people think, but they never actually mention who these people are or how they know them. Now, a common trait of the intellectual troll is, if they ask a question or raise a concern or make a statement, if you answer them, they have no interest in anything you have to say. They just want you to debate with them. They just want you to explain yourself. And your explanation will never be good enough because they are far too clever. They're a bit like an energy vampire. They tend to feed off your frustration as you try to get your point across. They continually misdirect the topic, uh, the topic of the conversation. They use endless paragraphs of word salad. And it doesn't matter what you say, they have no intention of understanding. The next kind of troll would be the one who deliberately spreads misinformation. Now, 
The agenda behind this kind of troll is to create false perceptions around a person or a situation. I would speculate that many of these kind of trolls would maybe be part of a movement or an organization as maybe they're trying to create bias, false narratives in order to maybe harass and deceive other people, particularly their opponents. Next up is what I would describe as a predator. Now these are opportunists. They maybe see people who are undecided about something and dazzle them with their intellect and their wit or they may see someone who is vulnerable so they come across as pleasant. They flatter them, engage with their target in the hope of any kind of a conversation. As that may be quite harmless at first. You know, I agree with you. You've made a good point. I hope you're in a better place now. But remember what I said. These are predators. You do engage with them. It's not long before it escalates to things like, so where are you from? And I would like to talk to you further. Can I have your email address or your phone number? Now, if someone does engage with them, but won't necessarily give them personal information, personal contact information, they can become quite aggressive. By the way, if you're targeted by this kind of troll, rest assured that They've probably sent that same friendly flattering message to dozens of people in the hope that someone will answer. Next is the perpetually offended troll. Everything outrages them. They are either offended personally or they're offended on behalf of others. Doesn't matter what's said. Doesn't matter whether it was in good humour or even if it's a scientific fact. Even if it's something innocuous, it will be twisted into something hurtful and offensive. This seems to be a mindset where opinions, beliefs, feelings are much more important than other people's or even facts. There's no room for nuance, there's no room for context or even difference. In some cases, once they have decided to find something offensive, there are those who would indulge in what I've heard referred to as offence archaeology. In other words, they will search through years of someone's posts, tweets, pictures, videos, actively looking for more evidence to support their claim. Quite typically, these would be the type who ask gotcha questions. Now, these are the kind of questions that you just cannot answer properly. Regardless of your answer, they will have something to attack you for. And this kind of trolling tends to generate what's known as pylons. And you would particularly see this on Twitter. Others tend to suddenly become very offended as well and add to the insulting, the threatening, the, the humiliation of the target. And these pylons are what researchers refer to as the broken window theory. Now, that theory is that if someone were to lift a stone and throw it at a window and smash it, others start to become very excited. They lift stones and start throwing at the window as well. Even though it's already smashed, that doesn't matter. They are getting a kick out of it as well which can be a bit of a nightmare if you happen to be that window. Lastly, there is the insulter or the hater. Now, they post hateful, hurtful comments, sometimes just for the sake of it. They don't have to know the person. They don't have to know anything about them. They just do it. They will threaten in many different ways. They may even threaten to expose personal details about their targets, such as where they live. And it can be terrifying to be on the wrong end of this kind of troll, because the victims can't always be sure whether or not to take the threat seriously, especially if the troll is anonymous. So there are just some kinds of the trolls. So the question as to why do they do it? Well, first of all, as I've already mentioned, there is safety behind anonymity. So they can feel safe to bully, insult and harass, even threaten people, believing there will be no fear of punishment. And when it comes to the pylons that I mentioned earlier, sometimes there's a belief that there is safety in numbers. There is also safety in trolling someone from a fake account. But the reasons for trolling can vary from person to person. Some people do it out of boredom. Some people do it out of malice. Some people just want to get some kind of response from, say, a celebrity of some kind. Some are just desperate for attention, and bad attention is better than none at all. There can be envy, envy perhaps over someone else's success or even just happiness. Someone may see something online that they disagree with and really believe that it's been posted about them personally. And some may just want to reel others into their own little world of misery. But something to consider when it comes to the online troll, 
Many times all they're doing is reading words. They may have a profile picture of that person or an avatar of some kind. Other than that, they know nothing about the person. Now, if it's, say, like a YouTube video, yeah, they see and hear the person speak, but they know nothing about them they've never actually met. So I think a lot of the time what's happening is they are reacting to a version of that person that they have created for themselves in their own head. And sometimes, some people just want to create mayhem for the sake of mayhem. So there are just some of the common types of the internet troll, the cyberbully. Now in the second part of this video, I'm going to look at some of the research that has went into the personality type of the internet troll. As always, there may be some things, some types that I may have missed. By all means, please use the comment box below. These videos too do tend to start some interesting conversations. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to my channel for future updates on mental health related topics. And until next time, thanks for watching. Here's one on uh, what happens when uh, what happens when narcissists feel they're losing control over you in the comment is they make videos about narcissism on YouTube. Mm. Oh, you meant me, oh you scallywag. I can tell from your grey hair that death is stalking you. <laughs>